we're back. My name is Jesse, and today we're going to be uh, looking at this sub panel here in the garage. Uh, real quick, when we got this uh, house, this uh, garage already had a sub panel in here. Whoever owned the house must have had like a welder or something in here that needed a 240 volts uh, because they have this sub panel in here with a bunch of outlets. I don't know if they had a compressor or a welder or something in here, but um, a couple weeks ago I did a video doing the Tesla charger. Uh, or installing this NEMA 1450 receptacle. And when I was opening up that sub panel, um, it wasn't the cleanest work. I'm gonna try and just tidy it up a little bit. But the main thing I wanted to do is use this as like a, almost like a little bit of an example. Um, as I'm cleaning it up, we'll kind of go over as if this was like a critical loads panel that we're um, kind of uh, working with or installing. So uh, let's try and get into this. So I'm going to try and get a little as close as I can here. Try not to get in the way too much. And I've already cut the power on the critical loads panel. So this sub panel should be, should have no power, but we got the voltmeter here. So we'll check it. All right. That's not the best kind of angle there, but let's see if we can get a little better here. There we go. Get the voltmeter here real quick. So our voltmeter, turn it to volts real fast. So this white wire is a neutral coming from the, the critical loads panel. And then these are the two hots. And the white goes to the uh, neutral kind of bus bar. And the um, black goes to this kind of this leg of the sub panel and the red goes to this leg of the sub panel over here. So if this panel was live, we should get 240 volts, but there's, there's nothing here. So we know that our sub panel is, is off. There is no power here. So I think what we'll do is let's, what's the first thing we should clean up here. Well, we'll remove all these hots actually. All right, so all I've done so far is just remove all the wires to these uh, 20 amp single pole circuits. And we'll just kind of move them out of the way for now. Let's see. Go ahead and move this here. All right, of course the microphone died. So um, just gonna do a fast forward through all this. I actually posted another clip behind this kind of explaining everything that I'm trying to explain here. So this will just be a quick fast forward and then we'll get to the clip at the end.
All right, this is like the 10th time I've shot this video. Hopefully I get this one right. Uh, the microphone died on the last clip. And so all I was trying to do was explain different ways you could go about hooking up to 12,000 XP to your house or your cabin or any off-grid setup. Um, I'm gonna go over um, kind of what I did, a couple things that I would do differently, just uh, um, different ways of going about hooking up uh, solar to your house or your cabin. Um, I'm just gonna touch on a few, but there's so many ways uh, you could go about this. Um, I'm just gonna kind of explain what I did and a couple things I would do differently. So the easiest way, and this uh, applies to the off-grid kind of setup where you don't have the grid um, as a backup. You could still have a backup, but it would have to be like a generator or something like that. Um, and the off-grid setup is by far the easiest. Um, this is service wire rated for 100 amps. This is just extra I had from when I did my setup. And so this service wire that's rated for 100 amps has uh, three conductors, the two hot conductors here, the black, the red. You have a neutral here, and then you have the ground wire here, the silver one. And so these four wires is all you're going to need if you're just doing an off-grid setup. Um, you would hook your four wires from your 12,000 XP and you would land them inside your critical loads panel. I'm just using the 12,000 XP as an example because that's what I have, but any off-grid inverter with a grid backup uh, would work. And I'll just mention that uh, the 12,000 XP has the ability to output 240 volts, but there's many inverters that um, you could that just do 120 volts. And so it's even easier because you don't even need this extra wire. It's literally just three wires. You're one hot and you throw on the ground. But we're going to stick with the 240 volts and the 12,000 XP for this scenario. Uh, your black and your red are going to come from the load breaker inside the 12,000 XP. And these two hot conductors here are going to land here on this lug here and this lug down here. It's kind of exactly how this is. This black wire and this red wire, they come down, that lands on that lug. That lands on that lug, 120 volts from this wire, 120 volts from this wire. And now this sub-panel is energized with 240 volts. And then you would run your neutral from your neutral bar inside the 12,000 XP. You would run a ground wire from your ground bar inside the 12,000 XP. And you'd run those to the neutral and then the ground bar inside your critical loads panel. And then after you um, kind of do those last two wires, uh, you could start running your circuits in here. You just start popping in your breakers, run your circuits here. And this panel is now being energized by your, your off-grid inverter. And you would hook up your solar, you hook up your batteries, and you just be using solar and batteries. And if you're just doing off-grid, it's, it's that easy. It's literally these four wires. You hook up your solar, um, your batteries, and that sub-panel is energized, and you could just start hooking up circuits. Now, if it's cloudy, it's rainy, it's dark outside for a couple of days, and you don't have a generator, um, well, your lights are just going to turn off. If you have a generator, then you're good. Um, you can keep going, but if you don't have any generator as a backup, as soon as your kind of batteries uh, get below a certain percentage, uh, your your whole critical load panel is just going to shut down. It'll turn back on eventually once you get more solar, the sun comes out, your batteries charge up. But until then, your kind of system uh, is offline. So the next um, kind of scenario we're going to talk about is what I did. Um, you're off-grid with the grid as the backup. And so... <clears throat> We're going to hook it up the same way with these four wires first. Your two hots coming out of that load breaker, they land on each lug, and then the neutral and the ground come from here, they land in here. And now we need an extra four set of wires. And the 12,000 XP has a 100 amp bypass feature. And so this is a 50 amp double pole breaker, but for demonstration, we're just going to pretend that this is a 100 amp. And so this 100 amp breaker, we would pop this inside the main electrical, inside the main electrical panel in your, in your, your main service panel is coming from the utility company. So you'd pop this inside here, uh, your main electrical panel. And so you already have four wires going from the 12,000 XP to the critical loads panel. You're going to run another four set of wires. And so you'll run these four wires from the 12,000 XP to the main service panel. And so your two hot conductors, the black and the red, well, they're going to come out of the grid input on the 12,000 XP. And the two hots are going to land onto your double pole breaker that's sitting inside your main service panel. And so these two hots land on the double pole breaker that's in the main panel. And then your neutral and your ground, uh, those are going to come from the neutral and the ground bar inside the 12,000 XP, and they're going to run all the way to the neutral and the ground inside the main service panel. And so the last two wires that um, I used was a neutral and a ground wire. And so the neutral and the ground wire, this last two sets of wire you're going to run, or I ran from the neutral, the neutral bar inside the main service panel to the, the neutral bar inside the critical loads panel. Then I ran the ground wire from the main service panel to the critical loads panel. And so what these two additional wires are doing is they're extending the neutrals and the grounds 
that are inside the main service panel, you're extending them to the neutrals and the ground inside the critical loads panel. So every single neutral and ground that's linked, that's that's uh, inside this main service panel, well, with these two wires, you're now extending every single neutral and ground inside this critical load panel. So when it comes time for you to start moving circuits over from your main electrical panel to your critical loads panel, because you want the, your solar system to power your critical loads panel, and all the circuits that are inside here, you, the ones that you want to move over, in my scenario, I moved over almost everything because um, I don't want to buy electricity from the utility company. I'd much rather have the 12,000 XP and all my solar uh, give me the electricity. So I moved over a bunch of circuits into my critical loads panel, but I didn't move over the neutrals and the grounds because that's what these two wires did. I moved over all the neutrals and the grounds. The only thing I moved over was the, the hot wires. So if it was a single pole breaker, a single, uh, a single pole breaker like this one here, all I did is move over that one hot wire. I didn't move over the neutral and the ground. It's, it's uh, associated with that breaker. Um, if it was a double pole breaker, I moved over the two hot wires um, from the main service panel to the, the critical loads panel. I didn't move any neutrals or grounds. Um, and if you want to see how to move over um, circuits from your main service panel to your critical loads panel, I have a video. Just go check it out. And so uh, the benefit of uh, kind of doing what I did here is if it's dark, it's rainy outside, whatever the case is, um, if there's not enough solar, your batteries get low, your lights aren't going to turn off because uh, you have that grid input and you have that 100 amp breaker that's tied into the main panel. So I'm just going to use my settings as an example. In the 12,000 XP, I have it set to um, if the batteries get below 20% and there's not enough solar outside to cover whatever I'm using, whatever energy I'm energy consumption I'm using in the critical loads panel, it'll just stop trying to use the solar panels and batteries and it'll just start buying electricity from the grid. So that's what those four wires that are hooked up to the main service panel come into play. Um, I'll just start buying electricity from the utility company to power my, to power my uh, critical loads panel. And then once the sun comes out, I get my batteries charged up. Um, I'll stop buying electricity from the utility company automatically. There are settings inside the 12,000 XP that once your batteries get above 50%, um, you, you stop buying electricity from the utility company and you automatically go back to using solar and batteries. Um, and it'll just do that automatically. And so I've had the 12,000 XP set up for like seven, seven months, six or seven months. And 99% uh, of the time I've had solar and batteries cover everything. Um, I think there was a week or two weeks in that six or seven month period where um, it was dark, it was rainy, it was cloudy for a couple of days. And by like the second day, the batteries had drained below 20%. And so I had to buy electricity from the main service panel. Um, but the next day the sun came out, batteries charged up and I automatically just went back to using solar and batteries. And I, I didn't use any, uh, like I wasn't buying any electricity. And so the only thing I would do different in my setup that I already have currently is I would add a hundred amp transfer switch. And that's the convenience for me because I moved over so many circuits. I think I moved over like 13 or 14 circuits. And so if the 12,000 XP fails, it breaks, whatever the case is, the, the whole grid bypass feature and all that stuff is going to not work anymore. So my lights are going to turn off. And so all the circuits that I moved over from the main service panel, the critical loads panel, I'm going to have to move all those back over to this um, main electrical panel. And if you only have, let's just take this example. If you only moved over like three or four circuits, then it would take you 10 minutes to move all those back over here. If your inverter failed and you didn't have a transfer switch, um, it would take you like 10 minutes to move all these back over here. But if you have 15 circuits that you've moved over, 20 circuits that you've moved over, if you got a lot of circuits that you moved over, then you could be here for like an hour or two hours or probably longer trying to move back over, you know, 15 circuits back to this main service panel. Uh, but if you had a 100 amp transfer switch, or if I had installed a 100 amp transfer switch, then if this inverter fails, I'm just going to go to the switch and transfer it to grid. And so that's going to allow me to remove the 12,000 XP, work on it, replace it, get a new one, um, but my lights are still going to be on. And then um, once my lights are going to be on because I'm just buying electricity from the grid. But if, uh, or once I get the 12,000 XP back, I buy another one, I hook it up, uh, wire it back up, and then I would just use the transfer switch to go back to solar. And so I would just go back to using solar batteries. And then if I needed it, I could buy from the grid. Um, and then I would just go back to using solar when I didn't need it anymore. But the transfer switch, just so it's a nice convenience to have especially if you've moved over a lot of circuits. Um, uh, it's, it's the biggest benefit is if your inverter breaks, it's going to save you a lot of time um, uh, where you're offline um, because you're having to move over a bunch of these individual circuits to your main service panel. Um, whereas if you have the transfer switch, it's literally a flick of the switch. Your lights turn back on. You can pull your inverter off the wall, uh, get a new one, repair it, whatever it is. And then once it's back, back working again, you hook it up, wire it, 
hit the transfer switch and then you're back um, to using solar batteries and just the grid as backup. And so that's kind of the one thing I wish I would have done, but uh, on the next house I get, I'm going to take all my stuff with me and I'm going to hook it up to my new house. Um, hopefully I'm going to get uh, some acres, a couple acres. And um, uh, in that, in that uh, house, I'm definitely going to throw a transfer switch. Uh, but that's going to wrap this one up. Um, hopefully that made um, some sense. Um, this is just uh, kind of how I went about it. If something didn't make sense, just kind of let me know and I'll try and explain it another way. Um, this is just a way you could go about it. There's lots of different ways you can go about it. But uh, I will catch you guys on the next one.